Hello everybody, welcome to another Teach Kevin Your Theme session. In today's session, we're going to be learning why attention to detail matters. And my teacher for today is Sanjin. Let's meet Sanjin. Hey Sanjin. Hey there, hi Kelvin. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, and it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's also a, a bit of coincidence that we meet, but I, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, sure thing. We'll get into that coincidence in a bit. But before that, could you introduce yourself? Tell us who Sanjin Seleski is, what you do, what you've been doing previously. Yeah, thank you. So, yes, uh, my name is Sanjin Seleski. I am uh, engineering manager currently uh, in uh, Bank Saudi Francie. This is uh, a, a one of the biggest banks in the Saudi Arabia, uh, but I currently live in Dubai. Um, I moved here a couple of years ago uh, and I'm in the career of uh, software, let's say, for the last 20 years. It's a pretty long time. Yes, 20 years, you say. That's two decades. That's a lot of time. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah some, some, sometimes I say two decades, uh, but that seems too, too long somehow. Uh, like a decade so it sounds somehow longer than if you say 10 years, uh, so two mm -hmm. decades, uh, I better say like 20 years, I don't know, um, may maybe one is better or the other. <laughs> yeah, so how I met Sanjin was in a previous TKYT session, we needed to do like um, impromptu benchmarking of some JavaScripts and we did a quick Google and we came up to two JavaScript benchmark which Sanjin has made and I was really blown away by the simplicity and um, usability of that service and I tweeted out the screenshot of the software and I also did a quick google and I found Sanjin and I just say hey love the service and that was how we got talking and yeah we are in a TQIT session so do, do you want to talk about that a bit Sanjin? Yeah, uh, this is exactly what really attracted me. Uh, as you mentioned, um, uh, you, you you were using, uh, there was a session with Daniel and, and you were using this tool that I've built uh, not long time ago. Uh, and it, it's really one of the best feelings I had uh, in, in my whole career. Uh, if you can imagine the excitement then, you know, it's pretty long career and then it's rarely that sometimes uh, something makes you so happy and it, it's really a genuine feeling uh, and, and, you know, a real expression of my passion uh, that I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, in details, um, so this was the tool uh, for benchmarking JavaScript code. Uh, so you, you guys uh, wanted to see how one uh, code snippet was running compared to the other. And uh, this was sometimes uh, more often than not my, uh, you know, my curiosity also, mm -hmm. as I'm very detail oriented and, and I pay attention to details a lot. And then I was always curious how how better is this code than the other. Uh, and you know, sometimes uh, I used to challenge colleagues, and I posted uh, a small challenge in in the inside the the team, uh, like. Can you optimize this code? Uh, you know, when someone writes a code and uh, you, you feel there is something to, to improve, but you don't really want to, you know, suggest a solution. You want to encourage that curiosity and and to see how 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 how, how people pay attention to those details. You know, what what can you improve? Uh, how much less code can you write and make it uh, even better performance uh, and easier to read? Mm -hmm. So, uh, just for fun, I built this tool, and uh, it, you know, I as I am really detail detail oriented, and I, I do have also like UI design background. Uh, I, I guess this was this was maybe the best demonstration of of, of those two um, experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And um, you spoke about attention to details. You know, after we we talked a bit. And you, we decided that we want to talk about attention to detail and why it matters. Like, why is this a very strong topic for you? Because I do like the topic, of yeah. course, because I believe 
as engineers or designers or whatever we do in, in software, paying attention to details really go a long way. Like with your UI for the benchmarking service, we saw other um, benchmarking service, but it wasn't all that great in terms of usability. Maybe it, it did get the job done, but visually appealing, it was just too cluttered. But yours was just appealing at first sight like you, you know what you need to do right input the first code input the second code run it and you see the output so clutter free and i just want to know how you think about attention to data and how it influences your work right um when it comes to a, a real attention to details unfortunately i believe that nowadays uh, this comes more like a cliche people don't really do pay attention to details although they say they do you know mm -hmm. they they often put it in the cvs they they like to brag about it uh but what is attention to detail you know how much can you go really into the detail and then say uh yeah i i do pay attention uh you, you know I, I would say, like, first look at your CVs, guys, people. Uh, if you if you are really pay attention to details, make sure the no CV has no grammar mistakes, especially mm -hmm. when you write your preferred code languages. Make sure it's it's, it's written properly, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, engineering managers, um, even recruiters, uh, especially uh, the team who is uh, doing interviews, are going through those documents. And if you don't pay attention to details there, then how can you how can you how can you uh, you know how can how can I trust that that you will do pay attention to code? You mm -hmm. know what is the guarantee? You know it, it's your selling point. How you know how can you convince me that you, you do pay attention to details if it's not there? If it's not at the very very first impression. Mm -hmm. uh, so w when uh, when you ask um, when you say that you saw other tools. Uh, and that they were not so great uh, as as experience. Uh, this is ex this was exactly my goal. Uh, I, I want. I really love simplicity. I I, I love the the phys the um, uh, the the sim less is more uh, simplicity. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you call this quote? <laughs> yeah. Or uh, or the idea. So I always try to reduce the elements, reduce the distractions, and give you. What, what you need uh, you know to, to achieve your uh, your attention uh, the goal that you want to so in this case this was you really want to run two code snippets and you want to see the result uh, but of course you know uh, you want to see this in probably like some some nice uh, nice user experience mm -hmm. you know uh, so something pleasant something something that really when you think about the tool uh, if you build something you want other people to use it so it, in my idea was hey i will build something that i will happily um, uh, share with someone else right so th that's how this really happened that uh, you know you contacted me because uh, you wanted to share this yeah so if you want i can maybe mm -hmm. uh, discover a couple of details in this tool Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, maybe sh t tell you more about how does it work under the hood. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, should I share your screen now? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, boom, we're here. Yes, that is it. Mm -hmm. So this, this is the tool uh, that we're talking about. It's very simple. You have one snippet on the left side, uh, something similar on the right side. It makes you wonder why would one run different than the other mm -hmm. and that is the point uh so when we talk about uh details you you know i put this small micro animation here and when mm -hmm. you run the the code uh is executed in the background and it really shows you how many times is it executed compared to the other and mm -hmm. shows you this in 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 a in a in a rate in a um in a ratio you know uh, which one is faster Mm -hmm. So uh, the details I'm talking about here, you you might not even notice, but it, it tells you that so when someone is is crazy about making perfect product, uh, I will show you. Um, okay, this is later. I will show you, for example, if you resize this window. Mm -hmm. size this window the the headline 
is somehow perfectly aligned mm -hmm. with this JavaScript logo in the top left corner. And when you resize to the, let's say, smaller screens like browser, uh, it nicely adapts to the vertical layout. So mm -hmm. these are only, only two details that I, I uh, bring to this, uh, to, to this uh, project, but it, it's, it's only something that I can demonstrate uh, because the rest is really, you know, pleasant to buy. You know, you, you can look at this and, and you really uh, find it nice. Nice. Um, so regarding the, the other things about, you know, uh, let's say, uh, again, attention to details, uh, you, you can notice that these animations here are very smooth. And if you know something about JavaScript, you will wonder how, uh, why is it so smooth? You know, why is it not jaggery? Uh, you know, why is it not stopping? Or how, how does it work uh, so smoothly? Well, everything, again, another uh, nice, uh, detail is that everything you want to uh, like if you want to more know more about me and other project you, you will find it here if you scroll down uh, where I also mentioned that I'm using web workers to achieve this uh, and what where web workers uh, are uh, this is uh, the web API that gives you ability to run code in the background uh, and leave your JavaScript thread alone. So you, you don't get stuck when you're executing this, this code uh, hundreds of thousands uh, uh, of times in, 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 a, in a second. So uh, I have a small diagram here just to explain how this really works in a very simple terms. Mm -hmm. uh, this here we have on the left side web browser, uh, we are sending the event to web worker. There are two web workers because we have two code snippets. This can be also more, uh, but in, in this case too, every web worker receives the, the signal. We're sending the event to start the, uh, the running of this code snippet in the background. Uh, and every, uh, I think it's every half a second or something mm -hmm. like that. I, I honestly don't remember the exact number because of, I was exper experience, experimenting with uh, a lot of uh, configuration to, to find something optimal. I think it's every half a second you receive the number of executed uh, code, how many times was it executed. And then the browser really only the, the updates the, the, the width of the um, line, right? So, so this line here, it's let's say somewhere about maybe 80% or something like that, right? So it, it calculates how many times it was executed co compared to the other, and then it, it, comp uh, it uses the ratio uh, formula to uh, send like 70%, then 85%, etc. So mm -hmm. then the, the browser is using uh, GPU to render this uh, because uh, we are not using JavaScript to, to uh, changes every every second. We are just sending the uh, the the value, and then uh, the CSS is taking over with the tra uh, transform, and it's sent, it's nicely animated. And then at the end, when it finish, it we were just sending a stop signal, and then the execution stops. And this is what we see. Like the 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 first uh, the one that was running the most will be always at the uh, in the most right side. Nice. So yeah, this is this is very very simple, right? But mm -hmm. it, it is, um, you know, it, it's it's using something that we didn't have before, and I guess this might not be possible in a, in this way. Maybe ten years ago, or depending when when the web API started uh, uh, evolving and when we created this. Let's say that we might achieve this uh, using actual server. Right in history, you would send this code snippet to a server. Server would um, send uh, the events every uh, every half second, one second. Uh, yeah, maybe we could use uh, web sockets for this. Yeah, but because of web uh, web workers, this is very very simple solution, and it's really nice. Oh, yeah, I like it.
Yeah, that, that that's uh, when you say you like it. That, that, that is what I want. <laughs> when I want people to like it, so you can talk about it, right? It's mm -hmm. you know, it's something that you know you will remember, and you will you will simply uh, probably share you know the excitement with someone else, uh, and that's the goal. Really, yeah. that's the goal. Uh, yeah. You know, I like that people like to challenge themselves, and then they they go and you can put crazy things here, uh, and maybe in the future I'll I'll add some features like um sharing sharing the code snippets let's say mm -hmm. right you, you you discover something that's crazy you can maybe then just uh, share uh, use a share link and then when you open the page someone else will see exact the same mm -hmm. co computation and you will run it again nice right. yes. that'll be very and useful by the way just from the technical just from the technical perspective, like this is running in uh, Chrome. So I can imagine that if you open this in another browser that has other a browser engine, it, the results will be different, right? But, but that is not the point of this uh, tool. The tool is, you know, the point of the tool is that you can measure it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. That makes a whole lot of sense. So you just you, um, rely on the yeah. browser APIs as well as the engine. So that's, that's awesome. I like it. Yeah, modern tools. <laughs> yes, modern tools it is. So yeah, uh, so back to attention to details. You did say you have like a yeah. like a slide for me. So uh, do you want us to yes. go through those? Yes, of course. So mm -hmm. so there you go. Uh, there is a presentation that I'm working on uh, about the the whole uh, the whole uh, you know attention to detail area. And let's say that th this is something that I'm looking to uh, when I find... So attention to detail, is, we are not talking about software here, right? We are talking about everything, you know, everywhere around, you know, in, in grammar, in, in finished product, uh, in, in any big company, maybe the one of the probably famous companies for, for things like extreme attention to detail is Apple. You know, you, you just have to look around how things look there, and it's crazy how much of attention uh, they they put. Uh, one of the small thing I remember is that when you turn on the flashlight on on the phone, the actual button of the flashlight changes, goes mm -hmm. up or down. Mm -hmm. Just like when you think about like why, right? Why would you pay, pay attention to that? But that is the finesse. That that is you know that is the secret. That that mm -hmm. is where you see that. Uh, someone is really really takes care about uh, the product and you know maybe it was maybe it was the idea of an engineer right maybe mm -hmm. that was not the idea of the product the product maybe didn't even think about hey uh, you know let, let's make the let's do the micro animation maybe there was a designer or engineer that that, that come uh, with this uh, idea or suggestion mm -hmm. uh, so that's why uh, I somehow I, I see this attention to details be, being uh, in a cross section of these parts the user interface, user experience, and software engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably mm, think about adding uh, other other elements or other part, parts of the product development, digital product development, like QA, mm -hmm. product, um, project manager. Anyone can really contribute to this, right? But it's very important that uh, you have this in your team. Right, that you some there is someone who can find those those simple things that you know, or I would rather say, ask questions. You know, ask questions. Why is something like this or like that? Uh, because then you will uh, you, you will discover if something was intentional or not. Because more often than not, you will find that something was done, but not really without thorough thinking. It was just like, he, you know, there like i see i see it this way but what about the variations of the design variations of of the components you know uh it wasn't really thought through and then if this comes uh, late to de to, to uh, development you know uh, it's more costly it will simply cost you more mm -hmm. to you know imagine if qa finds something that's the latest stage you go back to drawing board you know talk to the developer was it you know was it by design no okay talk to the designer was it by intention no okay so let you know back to drawing board you just wasted uh, you know time and and uh, effort uh, you know when something will, could be discovered uh, early uh, i'll go over this the slides uh, with um, like I'm trying to, because this is work in progress, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it might skip some, but uh, let's go and uh, I'll tell you, uh, you'll see what I mean. So here is the button. Um, you know, 
it's just a button, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there are so many variations, right? Uh, when you think about, it's not just a button. It's, it's really uh, an element with different states. So you have default version. And by the way, I'm intentionally using this um, sketchy drawing to remove your, uh, your uh, uh, let's say, to remove the destruction of the final design. You know, whenever I see, just like I, I demonstrated you this sketch about the, uh, the JavaScript benchmark uh, project, Mm -hmm. I was using uh, well, basically that that the tool that I was using Xcollidraw is already providing you this sketchy look, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can focus on the idea, not on on not being distracted by the design, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we have different states, and with minimal changes, you can see that there is disabled state, there is hover state when there is mouse over, let's say, uh, there is focus focus state when you are using let's say keyboard, you go tap tap tap. Uh, there is a selected state, so basically uh, it's either when you uh, selected state would be, let's say, maybe maybe just more like a component, right? When you have um, a label and when you click on the label and maybe that's filtering something, and mm -hmm. this is basically a, a selected, right? It's it's toggled. Then you have pressed when you like hold the finger down on on the touch. Uh, a screen or or when you click and then there is also something that's not necessary always uh, you know useful because it's 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 not you know it's not common but when you do uh, need to drag elements you will have something uh, that you need to distinguish probably from um, from the state that you're dragging the element and also a placeholder like where this element is going to drop right so this is all from a simple let's call it a button Right. So let's go over the presentation and, and feel free to interrupt me with anything you see, you know, uh, that you find interesting or, or you, you, you might be curious about anything. So feel free to just uh, stop me and, and uh, we'll, we get back to that. OK, here is the, the um, let's say, an example of a content on a website. Um, right. So. Let's say this is the this is designer providing you a design, right? And again, it, this is sketch uh, work. Uh, it looks like it was uh, drawn, but just to remove the you know the uh, the distraction of the actual final mm -hmm. product, let's imagine that there, this was a final design of the website, and there was a logo and content and whatever. It doesn't matter. And the designer provide this to you, and you imagine you just simply go and. Uh, Go and develop. Uh, if if you you know if you think straightforward and you don't really question anything, you will just simply create this content without thinking about the borders, the the what we call in the web container. And when you resize this window, extremely resize. So imagine it goes goes to like thirty inch screen or uh, maybe in in a, in a uh, landscape mode, it will look weird probably because. Mm -hmm. Designer didn't provide any either, either idea or suggestion uh, where it is the border. Like you know, what is the ideal uh, default with uh, or the, the container where where the content um, will, will will stay. And this is what I'm talking about, right? So this is this is small attention to detail, but it's very important because you might from this point start creating layouts without thinking, without without realizing that you know you want to have this uh, controllable. And mm -hmm. you know nowadays, this is very typical. Like you have even components, let's say, I'm going to just mention Bootstrap, for example. This is the, the first time I've seen uh, many years ago that they introduced the actual class uh, that is called container, right? And this is what I'm talking about. It's something that, that holds your content when you start resizing. And you need to talk talk uh, about this with designer. You need to ask questions because when when you receive a uh, component, I would say in ideal uh, state, this is not something that is going to uh, look like down the line when when it's developed because the content is dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. You're not designing a book or a poster or or, or something printable. You're designing dyna designing dynamic content. Uh, so from that point, you know you can maybe decide that hey, this is the container, uh, but we also have something that we, you know, in in web we can we call fluid um, container, right? So or full width, right? Full width it, it goes from end to end. 
So this is something that when you develop or when you're working on a product, you need to define. Uh, then when we talk about spacing, uh, there is another important thing. Uh, here is a box, um, just, just ordinary element, uh, like a rectangle. Uh, now, every, every element on, on, let's say on web, uh, what I really mean on, uh, you know, de developing uh, digital products, every element, uh, has, um, some sort of spacing around, right? And if you inspect this, uh, let's say div on, in your browser, in your browser dev tools, you will see, uh, it's, it's, it's use, it's usually different color. So it's color coded. It's kind of red color, uh, orange color, red color on the outside and green in the in, on the inside. Uh, it, it, that's for a reason, uh, because inside of that space of this of this um, container or the the the, um, the element we call padding, and the spacing outside is called margin. Uh, the problem is that I hear I've heard so many times people calling this same, uh, you know, just add some margin over there or add some padding, right? We'll add some padding <laughs> and they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know where the padding or margin is for them. You know, they, they often think that it's the same or they don't, they, they maybe don't re even realize that there is a difference, but the, there is a difference and it's huge difference because, uh, the margin that you add, for example, on web, if it's a uh, vertical, it will collapse. So it's collapsible. You will not add the same element with the same margin will not add those margins. They will, they will not add double margin. They will collapse and there will be only single, single spacing in between, uh, like from one element. I often say that margin is something that when you are pushing against you and, and pending is something that you want to keep inside and not, uh, you know, for sure not, uh, uh, not allow that any element, any content, uh, from outside goes inside or all the content inside doesn't go over mm -hmm. outside. Uh, this will be easier to demo, but, but, uh, again, uh, this is just yeah, a sure. presentation. Um, then let's talk about icons. Maybe a question for you here. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. no wrong answer. Really? What do you see here? Mm, some icons, um, the alarm icon, the yeah. cog user profile then perhaps chat the first one to my left yeah 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 so these are just icons uh, mm -hmm. i actually found those icons uh you know again i converted into sketchy look but these are the icons that we often see you know where you use all uh, we use it we see it everywhere but i intentionally uh created some uh, discrepancy between them could okay. you point me to to one of these Discrepancies. Hmm. Let's yeah. see. Uh -huh. Um. The the chat icon. The the square behind the the chat icon. Right. So look mm -hmm. at the border of that. Okay. So so look at the border. Border. Would you say that this border looks same as the other? Other no, not really. I think the it's thicker. The yeah, the border yeah. is thicker. Yeah, Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. So look, that's the point, okay. right? If you don't, as a designer, go into details and don't pay attention to that, your library will look so messy. It mm -hmm. will not have any consistency. And in this example, you can see I created four discrepancies. Here you have different uh how you call it uh stroke right mm -hmm. you, you yeah. said so it's different different border right so it's 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 much thicker yeah mm -hmm. so this is not consistent with all other icons right these yeah. are only four you might not see them right if they're one two three you might not see them but when you deliver a library of icons they should have consistency Right? Okay. Because they will un uh, otherwise look messy. For this second icon, it's about the size. And it's smaller. This one left first, let's say it's oversized. This one, yeah, that, that one is smaller. On the, on the last two, I created discrepancy in the style. 
so maybe sometimes this is not really noticeable because you don't see the rest of the uh, the library. Mm -hmm. But here we are using, um, let's say we are, you see how hollow is the, the gear, right? Mm -hmm. And then the center of, of this is, is, uh, is, let's say, full, right? It's, it's, um, it's opaque, there, you know, it's not transparent. Mm -hmm. So if you compare it to the, to the icons on the left, that should be just a circle with the border, not mm -hmm. like this, right? yeah. to create, to create uh, consistency. Yeah, right. true. Or if you think about if you think about uh, the balance of, of that, let's say um, how much of the icon is transparent and how much is is uh, like a full color, mm -hmm. you, you will see that the last one, for example, is very much uh, is is very less transparent. It's like has uh, you know there is a there is a lot that is uh, yes, there, that is uh, like dark on, mm -hmm. on that icon. Right, so so you, you would have to find a way to make sure that those icons are balanced. And if you go to some uh, online uh, icon library, you will really see that uh, many libraries are, you know, taking care of that. Right, but when you are creating them in in house, when you create them specifically for your product, and you go and you want to create something special or something unique, uh, you have to pay attention to that. This is really important. Now, this is something that looks more balanced. Can you see that? Okay. Yes. That this slide here, this, this is the icon that's uh, that's actually this this is the example with balanced icons. So we have this one here before, and we have this one with more balanced look and feel. So mm -hmm. this is attention to detail. So you you either care or you don't care, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you don't have to care, but at the end product, if no one cares, will be bad, mm -hmm. right? So here is another uh, example. Um, it might really this this is weird. Like you know, you might wonder what what is you know what is happening here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really about the 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 how do you call it the the shade, right? The shade of the color, right? So uh, you might not see there is one color converting to other, or uh, one color uh, with different uh, d different uh, density than the other, right? Mm -hmm. It goes in circles. So if I show you the, the second slide, you will see each of them is just one percent of difference, right? But here, you probably only see from the top left and, top, uh, and bottom left uh, square, you can only see uh, the actual gap, you know, that, that it's actually a visible change. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, more uh, very often, uh, you know, designers are creating these very smooth transitions, very light background with light content on, the, on top. And that's, that's not only uh, bad for eyes, it, it's, it's it's bad for uh, usability, right? For accessibility, um, and the, maybe the problem I would say is that uh, very often uh, designers have the very very nice screens, right? Very expensive screens uh, because this is basically your tool, and you might you that your screen might even show this with with a better quality right because it can show more colors let's say to put it very simple right mm -hmm. uh, sometimes back in the days you used to calibrate right you used to calibrate screens now for example you, more most designers just have uh, like probably expensive screens uh, and they're already let's say calibrated um okay then i have something with the table so this is this is just one one simple table right uh, headers and some content in in a single row now uh you will most likely receive again from designer a final product and if you don't have specific instructions how the content behaves then don't expect to behave exactly how you really want it because once you add the content this might happen and i'm not saying that it will intentionally this one here be in the center and this one be in the at the top or this one at the bottom I, i'm saying that these are all the possible variations and you might only see that when you receive the final product when when you know uh, not even with the qa but maybe when the actual content is edited and it's it's one of the pre-production environments right because 
your design, let's say, didn't pro, didn't show this, right? You know, you 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 saw it in a very nice designed um, example, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, hey, this is how I really want to look. But what happens when when you put the content that's dynamic, right? Of course, content is dynamic, and you know you, you have to say uh, think about what will happen. Then uh, there is another example. Uh, this is very simple. I see this a lot. Uh, this is basically a representation of, um, let's say, a menu, right? It's a, maybe a footer, uh, and I cannot distinguish one link from the other because it's all same line height. It's all stacked, and I have to basically press on this if it's on mobile, or I have to hover on that if it's on web to see, you know, what what uh, you know. What, what is where the one links, uh, link ends and another starts. Just adding some gap between, you will, you will find it more usable. You will simply see that, right? This is, again, attention to detail. Uh, now, look, uh, sometimes, uh, again, um, you might receive design and all the links would be a single line. Mm -hmm. So you would not have an idea what happens when it's when it's uh, when That's it's double nice. line. Now you know someone might say, "Hey, you're just over you know overreacting." Like, of course it will be different. Yeah, but uh, w show me, right? Show me because we cannot read mind. We don't know what designer had in mind. You know, uh, there might be different line height, uh, or it might be I, I, I don't know. I cannot imagine something else. Right, but usually it's simple line height that that changes. Uh, that ch basically not highlight line height; it's the row uh, uh, spacing between the rows. Right. Uh, same example here. You have something that's uh, let's say a card with, with some um, like a title or a subtitle. How can you say which one belongs to where? It's like you know, is this title of the first? Uh, card belong to the upper mm -hmm. or the lower. Some, yeah. Something I often see. Yeah, There's no spacing. Too. Simply add spacing, right? <laughs> you see that, right? Mm. Um, okay. Another example. Uh, simple card element, right? When you receive this from from a designer, it's usually very nice, you know, visually balanced and very beautiful. Uh, because that's how they see it, you know, they, they design it and then maybe they, um, you know, uh, they just uh, didn't have the idea about the content. Maybe it's just Lord and Ipsum. But we need to communicate. We need to understand, okay, was that the attention? Why, why do you just add like uh, three dots and that's, that's the end? Uh, what about when there is less content? And then this happens, right? When there is less content, what happens with the element? Does it shrink down? Does it grow as the content grows? You know, you cannot know. You 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 can only ask and get <laughs> you know uh, come up to a, some sort of a conclusion. Um, so that's that's one thing. For example, here you can see those uh, those gaps where we we need to decide on what to do. I'm oh, sorry, what to do about those uh, you know those those spacing. Um, okay, another example here. Um, See, this doesn't look bad, right? It's just like two icons. There is nothing I could say that is not a line here, or it's um, you know, uh, you know, it, it's something wrong with this. But there is actually, uh, it's not even doesn't have anything with the, with the with the ways uh, you know, like how you do, how you develop the product. It's simply the these are the proprietary of some other companies, and they have exact they have. The, you know, very specific rules. How can you use their their logos? It might look nice this way because you know you want to have this full bit, but it doesn't mean that this is uh, as per the the uh, the rules that they provide. So this is actual uh, icon, right? This is the actual badge. It's called badge for the uh, for this uh, uh, for this, right? So when you put this like next to each other, it should rather look like this. Right. Of course, you can do it your way. Right. You can do it different, but it by default it goes against the rules. It goes against the agreement. So uh, Apple again is is crazy about uh, this defining all these um, user interface um, 
rules and how you should use the product, etc. And it's very important because it's de facto a design system in, in, on its own. It's, it's telling you how you should use their, their product, how you should design for their product, etc. Uh, so then uh, here we have another example of some, some let's say, uh, content, right? This is exactly, this actually represents a title heading on the, on the page. And when you see this again, very nicely designed and you, let's say you, you, you just want to do the same on, on for web. Uh, now imagine you just copy paste it. W what's wrong here? It's very often missed the designer or whoever was creating this content was actually hitting the carriage return enter on the, on the keyboard. So every line is now a new line. And when you copy paste this in, in web, if you literally copy paste the content looks like this. Now, maybe it was by intention. Maybe, it, maybe that was the end goal. Maybe the, the designer really wanted to see this, but maybe not. Uh, because often I, I see this and I ask, okay, was this intentional? It turns out, no, actually mm. it was by mistake. Yeah. I wanted to align this, you know, I wanted to, you know, break the line. So it looks nice, but on the web, you cannot do that. Uh, because the, 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 I mean, you should not do that. You can do it, but you should not do that because the, the, the content will break anyway. It will, I mean, with responsive design, when you resize, it will break when it's, uh, when it's supposed to break. Right. So then uh, this is the container and that's how your, con the, your title should look like when you resize, it will break to something like this on the website. I have uh, just a couple of more. This is uh, an example of Carousel. Uh, actually, sorry, this one, this slide here, an example of Carousel. Uh, you know, there are two points here. First, if there was intention to, to have this scrollable, maybe this is cool, right? But maybe it's not usable because it's just cool because you don't see other elements on the, of this gallery, right? It's hidden behind the, the visible area. So, uh, you know, a suggestion to, to the team that is, that is working when you're giving the, the feedback would be, hey, how would user see this? How would user know that there is more to scroll? So you would do something like this. You bring those elements more together, uh, so that uh, you know you can you can you know you, you can you can actually see that there is more. So in this way, you can actually see whether it's on the left side or on the right side, because uh, this actually tells you if you remove the left side that it's only right. Well, you can swipe uh, in one direction. Uh, and um, another here is something very interesting, right? So you have a circle, a square, and a triangle in the middle. So let's say uh, this is, you know, th this is basically a play button, right? But I added these elements to demonstrate something. If you remove the square from the middle, it happens that somehow this is not balanced, right? It's, 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 it's leaning more to the left. It doesn't really look like a play button. So uh, make, you know, paying attention to details doesn't necessarily mean being mathematically um, obsessed, right? You know, to making, because this is mathematically correct, if mm -hmm. you want, right? You know, there is nothing wrong here. You cannot really see that, that problem, you know, the square right in the center, the triangle right in the center. But when you remove, you can see. So the attention to details is not always being accurate on on the, the numbers, right? You have to find the balance. This is something that it's called, um, oh, I forgot exactly the name, but it's um, the, the, um, the physic, the, the um, I think the physical uh, balance or something like that, right? So look, when from this icon to this icon, I just move that play button, the triangle a little bit on the right, right? So, so now, it looks fine, right? It looks better. And this was the gap, right? So these are small details, right? But if you just don't, don't pay attention, you, you will miss them. Uh, again, a couple of uh, examples with the icon. Mm. You have these two icons that next to each other look fine, right? Uh, but here's the thing. When you export them from your tool, 
uh, maybe Figma or something else. If you export them just like they are, uh, you're missing something that that keeps them uh, in a, in, a, in a same ratio, you know, consistent. So this will be the actual boxes of the elements. When you when you add those uh, uh, icons uh, in uh, on the button, let's say, this is how it looks because there was there was there was no agreement or there was no uh, consistent uh, box around. And this one on the right looks oversized, right? Uh, if you have this box, then automatically this will just you know fill the, the, the space just like every other icon. So it's balanced. So this is this is here what I'm talking about. So now these two icons have a, a, a surrounding box when you export. Uh, you know this will always be in the same uh, ratio. Mm. Right. And, and that's all. Uh, there is one more that uh, this, as I said, this work in progress that I added. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you uh, one more challenge here. <laughs> Find me the differences here. The differences. Okay. Yeah. Just look at look at this. Uh, look on the right side, and there are a couple of them. Just find two or one, uh, so I can I can explain more. Okay. So. The final amount, I see the comma is on like a, mm -hmm. after the one, but with the other, yes. we have the comma like yes. after, yes. before the, the last two zeros. Yes, exactly. These are the questions we need to ask when we mm -hmm. are doing design review, when we are taking the product to development. We should not assume that this is how it's supposed to be, right? Uh, Unfortunately, design and development uh, often is disconnected because you, you have design and, and, and you work on this and then you uh, hand over and it's most of the time it's a screenshot or it's like inspected element in Figma or other tool, uh, but it's probably not linked between all the elements. There, there, is, no, there is no link, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's not consistent, right? So the, at least you should uh, ask, okay, was that supposed you know, to, to look the same or are we are we intentionally maybe saying uh, adding comma or or maybe removing uh, um, the decimals just to round? Uh, but this might be wrong, right? Financially, it might be completely wrong uh, value, right? So here in this example, you have comma, uh, you have comma here as well. Now there is no dot here, right? For the thousands, uh, there is. Uh, this is so. This is fine. So there is missing comma here. In this case here, you're missing the symbol. There is there is very dollar symbol, mm -hmm. right? And then there is another one here. This says USD. It doesn't say the symbol of the dollar, right? Mm -hmm. As you can see, th these are very small things, but they matter because you, you are actually making this product look inconsistent. It doesn't. You know, something might tell you it's it's not professional, right? Mm -hmm. It's it, you know it, it, it's not final. It looks like it's in progress, or it just we are naturally mm -hmm. uh, leaning towards uh, some something more consistent, uh, something that's more, let's say, beautiful, something that that we, we like more, right? Mm. Uh, so, yeah, th th this is the uh, end of this presentation, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's it's going to grow probably, uh, but again, mm -hmm. uh, what matters is that. We, when we talk about attention to details, and this is only uh, uh, from the perspective of, of the you know front end, let's say you know uh, UI UX for software development. This is only about uh, the, the what you see, right? Uh, but you know there is so much more uh, to talk about when you when it comes to coding because yeah. there is attention to details in code in coding, <laughs> and then it's so much of details there but but we don't have time to yeah sure <laughs> go over that i i think i've learned a whole lot from just this little design presentation you gave and and it's actually timely because i'm in the i'm actually um designing guppy which is a product i have like a 2.0 of it and you just made me start thinking of all these little, little details that we don't really care much about. And I've seen inconsistent design in a lot of websites and softwares. And 
thank you for like shining that light again. I think a lot of people are going to find this valuable. So we have to wrap up now. But if someone want to reach to, out um, to you later on, like just ask you a question after seeing this video, where can they reach out to you? Uh, well, I am really only active on LinkedIn. So okay. if you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, feel free uh, to send a connection request. I'm mm -hmm. happy to connect with uh, with people over there. So just look out for my name on LinkedIn. Yeah, sure. I will definitely share the link in the description. So thank you so much, Sanjay. Do you have like any final words before we wrap up? Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for, for this opportunity uh i think it's uh it's really great i also congratulate you for breaking the 1000 of subscribers on your yeah. youtube channel uh, i just said so that today it, mm -hmm. it's amazing uh to see uh all those people that you interview and actually bring uh bring you know like a real value especially from people that build the tools mm -hmm. i saw a couple of uh, most of them probably are mm -hmm. the people who actually are hands on yeah. Uh, from some tools that uh, so I, that was really amazing it's great to be in this network yeah sure thank you so much um one last thing do you have anything to plug because for you coming on tkyt you have the the um so you have the reach to plug anything you want or anything you're working on or something you want uh, people to look at so you could just do that now um, I, I don't have too much time to work on a side projects, uh, but this was something that, uh, that I built from, uh, like a, you know, passion and to, to, you know, close that, that gap, uh, the JavaScript benchmark.com. That was mm -hmm. something that I was really happy to work on. Um, in the future, I'm actually planning to, um, convert this, this, um, uh, this knowledge about the know-how about attention to details into something uh, presentable, uh, maybe an ebook uh, or or some sort of a course. Uh, but we'll see how much this this uh, gets far. Yeah, sure. Just um, let me know when you have those, and I'll definitely share. So thank you so much, Sanjay. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care.